set is so strange that I have got to get it. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go! Now this big old hoary desk is interesting because it was handmade and because of the wood that was used. This is sycamore. You can see the roughness in the planing because somebody did that by hand. This is what makes it interesting. Usually you don't see handmade furniture by 1900. Most things are being made in factories, but this guy did it himself. Now he used machines, you can tell because the dovetailing is very even. It has a big thick beveled mirror that he would have had to have cut and made a frame for. He did very straightforward, not excessively ornamented, and I would say rather masculine looking finials on these caps. But by doing that, he was able to make them look pretty uniform. So it's sort of a cross between arts and crafts and late Victorian vernacular country furniture. It has some hardware replaced. It's $15.95, but the unusual thing is not just that it's handmade, but the type of wood that they used and the way that it looks, this grain is very different than what we usually see in furniture. And I love sycamore trees. These are right out of my childhood. They're $65 for the pair. If the Xenomorph was here, he would be telling me to buy these. The bottoms will light. They have this very standard base. My parents got a pair of crystal lamps from Sears in the early 70s that had the same exact base. You will see it all over the place, but the pearlescent finish is interesting on these. I'll get in so you can see that a little better. These would be really fun to decorate with. It's nice to have pairs. I actually have room in the car. I'm not really sure that I have room for them where I'm going, so I'm going to debate those while I look around. Seagram's N7 Up, and that's a good combination. It looks like something from about 1980 with the red and black together. It's priced at 65, but that's the era people are starting to collect. Wow, okay. This is a wow factor piece. It's not in great shape. It probably sat in some man cave for years. But look at this guy. He is a World War I soldier. This is genuine. This is the pilot, or les pilotes, I guess, in French. I'm massacring French again. But this is made of spelter. They want $9.95, but it is really that unusual. It's possible that finish could be restored by a professional painter and colorist if you found a really good one. Typically we see female forms of this, so this is very unusual. Now here's an ingenious form of repurposing. If you're going to make flower arrangements, why not sell them in a lovely old base to match? So you're suddenly charging $80 for a Royal Copley horse, or $60 for the deer. But that's because if you compare this to a floral display from the florist, you're going to pay, well, roughly the same amount, and you don't end up with a cute old thing to keep at the end. Here's some more of the rustic. This is the brown rustic in McCoy. $60 for the three-piece set. You usually see the green. I know that I've got someone out there looking for the green. I haven't forgotten you. There's a neat thing. Look at that old clock. Art Modern with the drink Coca-Cola, which would have been a later slogan for them, but not much later than the clock. They probably updated it once. This is $1,750, but that is a really unique housing. I'm imagining it came out of either a little walk-up restaurant cafe or possibly a school gymnasium. Safe Mark tires. Let's see how much this is. Well, that's $90. The thermometer is $150. The days of cheap advertising stuff seem to be behind us. Now, there is something hidden behind here. Maybe no one's looked for a while. Let's see what this is. Oh, that is Belgian and French. Santa's trapped. Get him out. Get him out. He'll never get to Christmas on time. He's $45. Someone could free him for that. 
Here's one of the better buys in the place, depending where you're going with it. And I'm almost tempted, but I think it'd be hard the way my car is packed. It's $75. It's an old tractor wheel, and you can see this is maybe 19 teens or 20s when they had to just muck through whatever. And so they had a little bit of tread built in. 75 bucks, I imagine they would take an offer. It's just big and heavy. But in Florida at Mount Dora, this would probably sell for 135 to 150. Nice old wall phone here as well. But that's priced at 250. That's pretty much full bore. Okay, this space is fun. It's trying to be tiki. It is mostly new stuff, but in the back. The one really cool old thing in the booth is this, and I love it. And it's her center of her display. And I understand why she has it priced at 95. It is absolutely worth that in that size with that frame. But I don't think it's worth enough more for me to get it. Too bad. The rest of it's cool stuff, but it all looks like things you can get new. So these were mostly leftovers from unfilled oil cans or unfilled orders for oil can banks but they do sell now and they're only five dollars each here because somebody just got a warehouse fine and they're selling for about gosh seems like 12 to 15 dollars a piece now so i'm going to get one of each well this was probably cheap enough to begin with because it's obviously a knockoff of treasure craft no brown and it is not surprisingly california originals from about 1970 it was already only $2.99, and now it's 15% off, so my goodness, that's like thrift store prices. I'll take it. In fact, it's frankly better than it would have cost in most of the Goodwills I've been in lately. Here's another version of a Lazy Susan from California, and it's a pineapple. And this is by Lane and Company of Van Nuys. Their stuff is often nicely marked. They're especially known for TV lamps and things like that. Now, the only thing is, I think this might have had a... No, there is the bottom. I was going to say, it should have a bottom, because otherwise, how would you get into it? That's pretty cute. It's $30. It's dusty. It's been here a long time. If they're having a sale of some sort, I'd be very seriously tempted to get it. Now, if this is really the bottom of an old jadeite butter dish, but it's not, and it's priced $3.95 and $16.95, your choice, I guess. When you see these elongated bubbles in shapes that sort of look like Blinko but seem a little exaggerated, they are usually a company called Bischoff or a company called Ericsson. They were both other smaller studios in West Virginia in the 1960s era that made similar types of wear. This is priced at 24 Not a bad price, but definitely about right for an Ericsson piece as opposed to a Blanco piece. The similar Blanco piece would be perhaps 65 And here's an, since we see a lot of Fenton, it's nice to point out unusual examples. This color, which is yellow crest, is not something you see often, and especially hand-painted. Now there's a nice piece of Blanco. With Blinko, you have to be careful with these pieces with handles. You never want to pick it up by the handle until you're sure that it's well put together because that was a two-step process. Sometimes they would crack. Sometimes they'll crack under their own weight. Don't pick them up down here. Pick them up in the collar if you do. Now, having said that, this one seems to be in good condition. It's $150. That's probably top-end retail for that piece, but it is one of the best pieces I've seen in a while. It's got that twist optic that was popular in the late 60s. And then since people are seeming to really enjoy brass, and because the last time I was here I showed a shelf of brass and didn't really zero in on it, I thought I'd take a moment with these pieces to show you different tonal qualities. This brass horse has almost more of a copper, because we're talking about alloys of metals here. This is very gold. The koi fish handle is interesting, so that's going to tell us that it is likely with this type of very shallow floral intaglio made in India, and there it says India. If it says British India, it's before Gandhi and the overthrow of the empire in 1947. Brass peacock. This has got a paper label on here. Also, made India, IND period. That's going to be 1970s. 
And then I like the dark patina on this bell. It's a claw bell with the lotuses. $28, though, my goodness. I do not get that price for those. This is an interesting hinged box. Now you're starting to see patina that may be deliberate. So this may not be as old as it looks when you look at the way the bottom is formed. I've never seen these priced separately before. They're $38 each, so $76 for the pair. They're 1930s. They're pristine. Thank you for watching this video. If you're enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Also, please do subscribe because then you can click that bell to be notified of future videos. We have membership packages. There's a couple of different levels. We appreciate the support of our super fans who help us do extra bonus content. You can check that out by hitting the join button below or clicking the link in the description. Check out our new channel, The Antique Nomad Live. That's live with an exclamation point. We'll have a lot of fun there too. So check us out here on The Antique Nomad and also on The Antique Nomad Live. Now let's get back to this video. Jubilee, a nice yellow depression glass pattern. You don't see a ton of yellow. And these are only $7 each. They have that nice etch and the fancy border. Matching cups and saucers for six. I have not seen this space before that I know of. They seem to have some old stuff and some new stuff. These are Fire King Kimberly for $9, but let's look at this. Is it brand new? Well, it does not have a lot of wear. It does feel greasy like new glass. It's nicely finished. Let's see what they say on their tag. They only have $15 on it, but they don't know anything about it either. And that makes me a little nervous. So I'm not going to take that. I think that's rather new. The owls are cute, good eyes. 1970s, I'm betting. Otagiri or about 1980, and this is 25, so that is a desk caddy because it holds a pencil and a paper pad, so not a napkin holder. Well, I just sold my Happy Face Bank, and here's another one for $22.95. Now, this one has some sort of tape over a rubber stopper, which may be original, but this is the original 70s bank. I know they had metal traps at first. That appears to be a scratch, or is that mm, hard to tell? Nope, it's coming off. I think it's a little bit of paint somebody got on it. It's a little bit of a factory second. McCoy still wasn't too careful about their glazes then. But you know, this is viable. And I'm about to show you one of the weirdest swung vases I've ever seen. This is a Fire Dawn finish. It has to be from 1976. Look at this. It's red, white, and blue. This is Fire Dawn. There's the red. There's the white. But then there's stars elongated in it all the way to the top. That is so strange that I have got to get it. 20 bucks. It's got a little scrape there. I don't care. It's just so weird. I have to have it. Now, they know the other swung vases. They've got 149 on this one, which is pretty color. If you're in Texas, you might see this. This is Comanche pottery, and this was done by a guy named Ron Allen. He actually he was very proud of it. He said, designed by Ron Allen right in it. It's 1950s, 60s vintage. You can tell by the designs with the starburst, but it's very rough feeling. He did figurals as well. Some of those sell for 45 and 50 and up but it has this swirled color to the clay. So this is another thing to look for that's very regional. Interesting to see a piece in Georgia. So this is a decanter from the 1960s. It's priced at 20, and this would have been a commercial one to hold liquor. Now, when you have these with the gold paint, you've got to be careful what kind of booze you put in them now if you're using them for that, because it can take the paint off if it spills down the edge. Wow, look at the cute old child's wagon. This would be a fun thing to put a glass top on and make it into a table. If you were looking for a reason to have it in your house, it says Express. It appears to be from the 1890s. It's in really good shape. Might have gotten stored in a barn and forgotten about for a long time. Price on that is $5.95. Let's take a look at this perfume bottle and see if it has some age and what the price is. Because it's big and it's sculpted, it has the recumbent nudes. $40, but it's as is, so that means it's probably chipped and that's why they have the top sealed. I'm just going to take their word for it. Darn it. There's the whole Continental orange base. 
a Fun 50 shape. I don't think anyone ever really thought that was going to get used. It was just for the style. This says seeds. It's actually rather appealing, except I think it's newer. We can tell by taking this out. And yes, this is all just glued and stapled together. So no n earlier than the 1970s. You know, one nice thing about this depression glass pattern, Royal Lace, which has always been one of the more popular ones, is it's got that really big starburst in. So one thing to think of if you're collecting uranium glass is look for pieces like this, where when you get the reflection, it's going to give you some design and a shape rather than just neon green everywhere you look because it will make your display even more interesting. It's only $25, that's a good price for that piece. I've always been a fan of these Roseville double vases. I thought this was an interesting way to design with the bridge between. This is the Cosmos pattern. It's got the correct tan clay Roseville USA marked properly and the mold number and size. And for being fall colors, it's actually a nice array. You've got pinks and greens. It's got a little bit of a tawny color to it. I like it. Okay, so this one's an interesting quandary. It's the Fenton Pink Hobnail Opalescent Lemonade Set from the 1980s, and you think, big deal. This didn't get used much. Somebody just bought it and put it in their cabinet. But inside it's got the little label that says 100 years, which means this was the limited edition made in 1988. Now, one set of this just sold for $175, and one set just sold for over $300. So, over $300, I'd be thrilled. $175, do I want to put $135 into it for that? Mm, well, I'm going to just give it a try and see if they'll do a discount. Oh, and here in a different space right across is the Constellation console bowl that went with those triangular candlesticks. So now you've seen the whole set. These colored pieces are Heisey ponies that were done by the collector's clubs years after Heisey was out of business. Slightly blemished is this copy of Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, the Burbank edition. That show was considered very cutting edge in its time. And you can see there's Goldie Hawn, Rowan and Martin at the top. I doubt he's wildly old, but the Pelican is certainly timely for me going to Florida. $150, though. He is cute. He's cracking with some age because, obviously, he wasn't cured well. That's a little bit of a problem. So he's marked down to $150. This is a Blendo pitcher I really like, and you just don't see this low-waisted shape very often at all. I wish it had a price, because I'd be interested. This is something we see sometimes in furniture of the 1920s and 30s. This has the barley twist, but it's a tile top, and the tiles are a scene, a port scene in this case. There's initials. You can tell that the detail isn't too good. Her face is sort of snowman-like up close, but if you're really just looking at the overall effect, it's cute, and this is $2.95. Mind your beeswax. This is another one of these fireplace screens where the point was to raise and lower the tapestry part in the mid-Victorian period so that the women whose beeswax makeup would melt in the heat of the fire could be protected from that embarrassment. Well, who needs a flea market when you have this great assortment of stuff right here? This is the place to shop. I should have just come here first thing. Well, I'm glad I found some place that had cool stuff and should have figured that it'd be Big Peach Antique Mall. It really is the center of antiquing in central South Georgia, in my mind. It's the place to stop off of I-75. I'm not going to bother with those flea markets again. It was all new stuff, so I just thought I was going to learn something new, but it turned out something old was better. That's the way it is in Antique and Vintage. Anyway, check me out on the social media links you see in the description below. Check out my membership information. Check it all out. I'd love to have you join me in all of my adventures as I run around in this crazy, interesting world of antiques and vintage. Bye for now. We'll see you soon. 
Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!